Good morning, everybody. Welcome here this St. Patrick's morning. Um, glad you came. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody and also like to welcome our guest pastor today, Reverend Jean Yatka. And, and, uh, so please help me in extending uh, Pastor Jean a warm First United Methodist welcome. And everybody, please remember to sign the attendance pads that are at the end of each aisle. Uh, we need that for our records. And uh, this week's uh, United Methodist Area Lenten service will be held here Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. with Reverend John Gill from Mims United Methodist Church preaching. Our Lenten studies this week will be held uh, by Ray Lynn Henderson leading both of the services. And do we have any first time visitors that would like to stand and be recognized today? Don't see anybody? Well, thank you. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, at this time, please rest your hearts and minds for the prelude. have a million notes running around in his head, I tell you. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's stand up and sing I Cannot Tell. It's sung to the tune of London Derry Air. So we're doing a nod to the Irish this morning. Thank you. 
I cannot tell how all the land shall worship when at his bidding every storm is still. Or who can say how great the tribulations when all the powers of men And now would you turn to those around you and give them a good Irish blessing.
Good morning. Y'all looked up like, whoa, she's behind me. I snuck up on you, didn't I? You saw me. How's everybody? Some of you don't have green on. You know what that means. Oh, boy, look at them looking for, I have green, I have green. Don't pinch me. <laughs> Did you know that at school sometimes? If you don't have on green, they, they say you can get pinched if you don't have on green. You do? Oh, my goodness. We have a bunch of pinchy people up here. So, it's Sunday. So it's Sunday, and through the week, you're in school, right? But you don't go to school typically on weekends, right? Okay, why do you go to school? To be smart, to learn, to hang out with friends. And to play, to be bored. <laughs> uh -huh. Nobody said anything about to prepare for when I grow up. You were going to say that? <laughs> so now comes the bigger question. When you grow up, what do you want to be? A paleontologist. A teacher. A veterinarian. A veterinarian. A YouTuber. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, you know what? These are the things you want to do when you grow up to earn a living, right? But the bigger question is, what do you really want to be? I mean, I'm already grown up. I've had a lot of different jobs. What do you want to be? A Christian. A Christian. A follower of Christ. Now, what does that mean? What, what things would we do? What does it mean to be Christian? What do we want to be? We want to be? Christian. Believe in God. <coughs> Generous, kind, loving. These are the things we want to be. We want to be godlike. Regardless of what job you have, and I've had like lots and lots of different jobs along the way. Did any of those things change? Was I always a Christian no matter what? Was I always trying to try to be like Christ and like God, hopefully? Was I always kind to the people around me, hopefully? Was I hardworking, hopefully? These are all things we would want to do. And the pastor's going to be talking today about some parts of Ephesians where it talks about how we will treat people, how we will be. Again, it's not about your job, but think about it. Who do you want to be? when you grow up. Yeah, we want to be like Jesus to following his steps to be godlike. We and this one down here said and we love Jesus so much. That's true. That's what we want to be. We want to be love in love with Jesus. Let's have prayer together and then we'll follow with the Lord's prayer, okay? Dear Lord, we thank you for everything you've given us, especially your son Jesus. Walk beside us every day. Lead our footsteps to follow you and be like you. And now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against Jesus. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you'll stay here for just a second, Miss Amy's got something she'd like to tell you in the congregation. 
morning, everybody. Um, we're going to be having our Easter egg hunt, which is open to the community on Saturday, April 13th. It'll be after the breakfast. We usually hold it um, right out here in the courtyard and also in the playground. Um, so we're looking forward to having um, any of you know family members or children come. We'd also like to encourage some people to help out as volunteers. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have crafts, games. Uh, of course, we, uh, the Easter Bunny arrives and hides all the eggs for the kids. But we are this year um, asking maybe for some donations for it, collecting like the plastic Easter eggs and maybe some of the wrapped candy, maybe not chocolate. That tends to kind of melt when we hide it outside. But if you can find um, some candy pieces that would fit in the plastic eggs, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, I have a bin in the back corner as you walk in, so if anybody, um, you know, you're shopping and you happen to see some things on sale like candy or eggs, we'd really appreciate it if you could maybe donate some items for our annual community Easter egg hunt. Well, uh, Saturday, April 13th, and it'll be probably about 10 in the morning. So. All right, well, thank you so much, and have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day.
morning. Today's scripture lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. And these are really intended to be instructions for Christian living. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are all members one of another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away all of your bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. These are the words of God for the people of God. God. And at this time, if the ushers would come forward for our tithes and offerings.
praise you and we worship you. We thank you for giving us the great privilege to be able to share what you have given to us, to be able to give what, we, what you have placed on our hearts, knowing, Lord, that it's not about the money. It's about our very selves. And so we pour our very, ourselves out as a, as a holy and a living sacrifice, Lord, asking that you do with us what you will. Make us into who you have created us to be. Lord, bless this offering, bless the gift, and bless the giver in the precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's just lift up our prayers and concerns. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you that we can come before you, and we can be those who know that you are with us. We can feel your presence and sense your love, sense your grace, sense your mercy. So we lift up all the cares and concerns that have been placed on our hearts. And Lord, I, I invite anyone who would like at least this time even just to, just to take either a time of silence and allow you to speak into their hearts and lift up the prayers, the concerns on their hearts, or, or maybe even speak it out loud, Lord. So we come before you as your people gathered here this morning. hear our hearts, hear the prayers, knowing that all true prayer begins in your heart, Lord, and we know that when you've placed a person or an individual in our hearts, that it's, uh, that it's in accordance with your will. And so we thank you for that. And we thank you for the great, the great knowledge, the great, the great way of being that allows us to know that you are with us, Emmanuel, God with us, and to know the promise that you gave to us, that you will be with us to the end of the age. So, Lord, we lift up our prayers to you. And may they rise up like fragrant incense to, before you, knowing that you hear the prayers of your people, all God's children said. Amen. There's no prayer song. All I know is what's on here. <laughs> is there, are there uh, prayers of the people that are being brought up to me? We're all done. We did it. Now it's my turn. Okay. Now we're in trouble. I just want to welcome, uh, thank, thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, I met a few and I, I got here about a half hour early and I like to always sit in the sanctuary uh, and uh, I, don't think, I don't think this is news to you, but I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. I feel God's, I feel God's presence in such a way that um, I kind of got a feeling there's been a lot of prayer over many years in the sanctuary. And it's, a, it's, such, it's such a gift to know that. And, um, and sometimes the things that we talk about as far as uh, what it means to be a Christian, uh, there are things we've heard many, many times. Uh, but the reality is sometimes we don't live it that well, do we? Any perfect people here? No, oh, I shouldn't have my hand up either. No, no perfect people. But the reality is, is that the truth is that we have perfection within us, right? 
the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, Jesus Christ. In Ephesians, over and over again, the scripture that we're looking at today, uh, but if you look at Ephesians, the six chapters, over 30 times it references in Christ, where we are located, in Christ Jesus. And there's a great old, um, old saying, I'm not even sure where it came from, it's, it's ancient, uh, and it says that our thoughts become our words, our words become our actions, our actions become our character, and our character becomes the way we will be, the way we will live. And so I'm, I'd like to ask the congregation here this morning, and I, I love the children, so what a, what, a great, what a great ministry that is. That's, uh, that just blessed my heart to be able to see the kids and, and that. And they asked a question, and we always ask it of our, of our young ones, but what do you want to be when you grow up? Anybody here want to have something they still have on their hearts? What do you want to be when you grow up? And of course, the children helped us with that. And um, we, we want to be like Jesus. I want to just teach you a little, a little mini chorus. I want you to sing this with me. It just goes, Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Sing with me. Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Oh, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. And that becomes our prayer. And we begin to realize for this to occur, the only way that we can allow that to occur is to, to be open to the reality of God's presence, to say, Lord, how many of us could use a little peace this morning? How many of us could just use a little, and I love your, I, the Sunday, little the children's, uh, the emphasis that your teacher gave of in being. See, the reality is, and the, I'm going to give you, I'm going to do something that a preacher should never do, but I'm going to give you the conclusion of the message this morning, and the conclusion is to be, is to love. God is love. John 4, 1 and, 4, 8 and 16 it says, 1 John 4, 8 and 16 says, God is love. God is love. And we begin to realize that, that the only way, you can't, you can't do love. You can't do in love, right? That's not good English even, right? But you can be in love. And love is a state of being that allows ourselves to take on the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And we could look at a lot of different things. I teach a class over at the Awakening Institute, which is right around the corner, a, a ministry that we've just opened up, and I'm primarily a teacher. And, um, and this, we can understand the characteristics of God uh, relatively simply uh, in a way that everyone has heard, and that's through the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, right? And we begin to think, hmm, how many, how, how many of us have truly got, are, are in love with Jesus Christ? Now, most of us can raise our hands for that, right? I'm in love with Jesus. But we're also in love with every single person around us. Now, we might be able to say that if I asked you to turn to the person next to you and say, I love you. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Just turn to the person next to you and say, I love you. I love you. That was relatively easy, wasn't it? And, I knew it? and it was sincere, I could hear it. But now I'd like you to go to Publix later on. <laughs> go to Walmart, walk up to a person and say, I love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you. Whoa, that's a little more difficult, isn't it? And you might even, they might even say, how dare you? I don't believe in this Jesus. But it doesn't change the fact that we still love them in Jesus. Because we take on the characteristics of Christ. And the scripture that we're looking at in Ephesians helps us a lot. Uh, and you'll hear the fruit of the Spirit in here as we go. And the scripture begins 
in my, in my a New Revised Standard that I'm reading from, it's, it's titled actually, Rules for the New Life. Rules for the New Life. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Right off the bat, there's some serious difficulty here. Because we can, I, I think most of us, I, I, would, I would venture to say that most of us are relatively honest people. We don't, we don't have, you know, we're not, we're not just blatant liars. So we put away falsehoods, and that might not be too difficult. And maybe we even catch ourselves sometimes when we uh, have, say something that may not be totally accurate. I know myself will say something, and I'll, and I'll say, oh, wait, you know, let, let, me, let me explain that to make sure that you'll have it correctly. The falsehood is not difficult. You know what the hard part is here? For we are members of one another. Unity. Unity is such a key, in our, especially in our, in our, our modern milieu, our, our modern way of living. We're, such, we're so individuals. We're, so, we're so, so individualistic, even. We're even to a place where we begin to think that, uh, you know, let me take care of myself, and if I don't take care of myself, then, uh, then things aren't going to go well. Uh, and we become a very me, myself, and I group of people. And, and let's face it, our, our church, our Methodist church, is so split right now over all kinds of various things. There, you know, there's the big issue, which we're not getting into, but there's also the, the, all the little things. What does it mean to be a member of the household of God? To be a member of the kingdom of God? And be open to the reality and truly know that, that sense of being that we feel with Jesus Christ, with our Lord. You ever, you ever feel when you're in that quiet place, you just feel one with God? Anybody ever feel that? I know I see lots of heads going, yeah, yeah, yeah. How often do we feel one with one another? I mean, truly one and connected. Because the reality is, is that the closer we get to God, the closer we get to Jesus Christ, the closer we get to one another. Because God is closer to us than any, any I had an old country preacher. He's, he was 91. This is going back 30 years ago. And he said, Gene, let me tell you something about, about God, tell you about Jesus. He says, he's closer to you than white on rice. And it's true. It's true. It's such a simple thing. And we begin to realize the unity. And then the scripture goes on and says, be angry. I like that. Because you ever get angry? Anybody, everybody, anybody here ever get angry? I get angry from time to time. I get angry sometimes over nonsense. I'm a retired pastor now. I retired in, on December 31st uh, this past year. And, uh, and I tell you, I love coming out and doing what I'm doing right now. I love teaching over the Awakening Institute. I love, I, I love being around the, the people of God, but I do not miss the meetings. I do not miss the administration. I do not miss, and I'm going to call it now because I'm retired, the nonsense. The nonsense that disunifies us, that takes us, takes us apart. And, and sometimes when, I, when I, I would go into a meeting, I don't know if I, I wouldn't be angry like, but I would be frustrated and I would say, man, why can't we just get along? Why can't we just... Love the way God loved us. So, but, so I like that, that we're given permission, be angry, but do not sin. And sin is a simple thing, believe it or not. Sin is something we don't hear in our churches very often anymore, but sin is simply that anything that separates us from God. Anything that we may think, say, or do that separates us from the realization that God is with us. That's sin. That's a lot of different things, isn't it? That's from everything from obvious sin to just being angry or being in a, in a place. And so, but it says, do not sin, do not let the sun go down in your anger, and do not make room for the devil. It's so serious, because if we don't allow ourselves to take on the characteristics of God, and we use the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control, if we don't allow ourselves to at least be open to the reality that all those things live within us in, 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 in its perfection, if we believe the Holy Spirit's within us, if we believe that we're in Christ, then the fullness of all that, all that Holy Spirit fruit is in us if we'll just let it loose. If we'll just let it go out into the world. And we begin to realize that the only way that can be stopped, and by the way, and I have Christians come up to me, I'm a spiritual director, so I have a lot of, a lot of people come to me, and, uh, and I'm also a pastor or counselor, and they'll say, can the, can the devil take me over? No. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Holy Spirit's more powerful than anything you can possibly imagine. The devil cannot, but the devil can whisper. The devil can get a foothold if we do not allow ourselves to be focused on the presence of God, if we don't allow ourselves to take on the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And we begin to realize how important this is. Thieves must give up stealing. 
I'm, I'm assuming that we have no thieves here. But sometimes, anybody steal internet? Actually, more laughter than I thought. No, 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 no. <laughs> anybody ever kind of just withhold some information and, 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 and keep that, say, just so you're a little smarter than the next person? That's kind, of, that's kind of the same thing. We begin to realize thieves give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their hands so as to have something to share with the needy. See, a huge characteristic of a, of a church and a people of God is those who do not constantly think of themselves but give alms. This is, this is Lent. This is the second Sunday of Lent. And, and, the, and one of the big parts of Lent is giving alms, giving, giving to the poor out of our abundance, giving to those who have less than we have. And we begin to realize this is a, is a sense of honesty. It's, we work honestly with your hands. Do you have any carpenters or any, any people here that work with their hands? I think we have a room full of engineers, don't we? <laughs> engineers work with their minds. But work with your hands sometimes. We just started something. My wife and I, Marion, would have been here this morning as if she woke up with a, a, a bug. Um, but we just started in our backyard. We bought a house over in Port St. John. And uh, it's, it's got a, not a big backyard, but a nice backyard. And we're going we're gonna to make a garden out of it. And honestly, I'm not one who, I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a, I, I'm, I'm, I've been more a book person, more of a nerd type person. And you know, I love studying the Greek and the Roman, the Hebrew and all the different things going on. But I've decided that, and I decided the other day, we started buying plants. And we started, I started digging in the dirt. And I, I don't think my hands were ever that dirty. But it was, it felt really cool. It felt like, wow. I'm, and I'm planting these plants. And, and it, if you know me, this is strange because I go out each morning and I look at the plants. How you doing today? <laughs> they don't talk back, so it's okay. But we're planting this garden. We're working with our hands, and there's something about that. There's something about working with your hands and, and, being, and just honestly doing God's work to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come from out of our mouths. Anybody gossip at all? Anybody ever talk about someone else? By the way, I'm not, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. Because we all do it, don't we? We all do it, and we don't do it, maybe not maliciously, but sometimes, you know what we do it the most? Is in prayer. Lord, pray for so-and-so because, man, they got some real stuff going on. They got some real stuff going on. And we begin to realize, wow, sometimes we aren't fully capturing the character of Jesus Christ. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful, and I love this, for building up. A, a, a word for that, and I'm sure everyone here has heard it, is edifying. What does it mean to let every word come from your mouth? And in 1 Peter, by the way, it says, let every word come from your mouth as if they're the word of God. What would it be like that if we measured every single word that we spoke and said, how is this building up the person I'm speaking to? How is this helping that person become a better person? How is it not, not tearing them down in any way, but it's building them up? Scripture says but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so your words may give grace to all who hear. Grace, unmerited favor. If, one of the, if it wasn't for God's grace, where would we be? The grace of God. Through our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, who came to us. And Romans 5, 6 says, and he, he died for us while we were yet sinners. The grace of God. So what would it look like if every word of our, from our mouths was building up the person that we're speaking to? And as a matter of fact, in our minds, we're even thinking about how are my words building this person up? And how am I extending grace? Because every one of us uh, can speak to someone else, and by the way, everyone else can speak to us and find something to pick on. I heard a little chuckle back here. <laughs> right? We can all you know, think of that person that you just don't understand and think of what, what comes to mind. Well, give them some grace. Say, say a, a word that builds them up. What is Jesus, what is Jesus called in the first few verses of John? The word, right? 
In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word, the Lagos, speaks. And it speaks truth. It speaks the good news into our hearts and builds us up and pours out grace. Characteristics of Jesus Christ. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Many people ask me, how do you grieve the Holy Spirit? And you grieve the Holy Spirit by being un unlike Christ. You can, you, 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 you're not, not going to go through it, but you know, the, look at the verses in Galatians in chapter 5, just before the fruit of the Spirit. You want to grieve the Holy Spirit, lust and licentiousness and greed and all those different things. We can do that because we have the free will to do that, but God says no. He says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger. Bitterness, anybody? You don't have to raise your hand, but just look into your heart. Is there something I'm bitter about right now? Is there something going on in my heart that, that just I know isn't pleasing to God, but I can't seem to get rid of it? Just give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. And allow yourself to, Scripture says, put away from you all bitterness. I like that because it says that you can do it. It's an action. Put it away. Put it away. And wrath. In other words, if there's someone that's done something to you and you'd like to see God strike them down with a lightning bolt, put that away. Put it away. Anger. Wrangling. Any wrangling? I don't know the ins and outs of, our, of the church in here in Titusville. I do know the ins and outs of the churches I've served. And there's always wrangling. There's always people that don't agree. There's always people trying to take control of power. And there's always people trying to do this, that, and the other thing. For those trying to do that, stop it. For those who see others doing that, go speak an edifying word of grace. You see how it works? And we begin to realize this is, we, and then we become united. Then we become members of the same body. Together with all malice and be kind to one another. There's one of the fruit of the spirit, right? Kindness. Tender hearted. That's hard for guys, isn't it? The women seem to have it easier. At least I'll speak for my wife and most of the women I've met. You have more of a tendency toward being tender hearted. Maybe it's a maternal thing, but... Us guys, you know, we think that it's a weakness to be tender-hearted. And tender-hearted simply means that making ourselves vulnerable. That's like a nasty word, isn't it? Vulnerable? But did Jesus Christ make himself vulnerable for us? We begin to realize, wow, that's a characteristic of Christ. Forgiving one another. Just for a second, I love silence. I'm, I, I'm kind of a contemplative at heart, and we're not going to spend a lot of time, but I want to just stop for maybe 10 seconds, and I want you like, to think of someone you need to forgive and say, Lord, I give them to you, and I ask that you bless them. Forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you, is what the scripture says. Therefore, one of my first classes in seminary years ago, my professor said, whenever you see the word therefore, stop and see what it's there for. <laughs> and it's true, because this is, this is Paul bringing together the, the whole teaching in one, in one verse now. Therefore, be imitated, two verses. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love. Say that with me, live in love. Live in love, one more time. Live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to Christ. The Lord Jesus said in John, it says that there's no greater sacrifice than one who would give their life for their friend. The great commandment says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I love the way Jesus upped the ante in John 15 when he says, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another to death. Sacrificial. And then we become just like Christ. We become very, very Christ-like. 
and we begin to allow ourselves to, to move in that. And the teaching that I do at the, at the Awakening Institute, and it's, and it's, a, it's around this, and uh, I just want to mention this briefly, not as an advertisement for the Awakening Institute, but because sometimes people think we can't do this. Uh, and I've broken these down. The first ones are dispositions of attitude. In other words, they're self-oriented. There's things that we can do. And this is, uh, this is going to be very brief. Patience. We can allow ourselves to be patient. We can become more patient. Kindness. We can intentionally go and say, I am going to be more kind. Generosity. We can be more generous. These are things that we can decide to do. This is an attitude. We can become gentle. We can become compassionate. Compassionate just means to allow ourselves to, to reach into the pain of someone else and lift them up. Be with their, with their pain, with their passion. Compassion and mercy. Self-control. We can stop. It also means sober-minded. We can become a little more self-controlled. Those are things you can do by yourself. Once we begin to do that, something amazing begins to happen because this is all by the grace of God, but all of a sudden the grace of God begins to really take over. And we have what's called dispositions of relationship. First is a self, and the second is others. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, we think, is, is only is something that we can't do, but in Christ we can do that, and it's pointed to others. Justice. And sometimes we think justice is something that, that is, uh, okay, let's, let's make someone pay. No, God's justice is not retributive. God's justice is restorative. If we apply justice, we are helping others become restored in Christ Jesus. We're actually becoming those who God wants us to be. Compassion, mercy, humility. I don't know about you, but humility is something that I could never do on my own. It's, I don't, it's, it seems like I, I, need, I, need, I need the grace of God. And humility for me is nothing but pure receptivity. Being so others-focused and God-focused that that's all I hear rather than let my, my own self and opposing myself onto it. Faith, hope, and gratefulness. These are all things that I believe that are they're relationships with others that we really need God for. But then there's something that I, and I love these. I call these threshold disciplines or dispositions. And threshold dispositions are simply... You know, the Lord Jesus gave us some tremendous gifts. Of course, our most important one is salvation and, and what God did. But you know, there's two, only two things in Scripture that Jesus says, this I give to you. This is mine, and I give it to you. I give you my peace, and I give you my joy. Once we allow ourselves to enter into the peace, the Hebrew shalom, or the Greek irene, we begin to realize that, that we can become, and I think this might be the biggest need in the church today, is for us to become what's called more irenic more peaceful, to be a peaceful presence, a non-anxious presence in the midst of the, the struggles, the things of the world and things within the church. And we begin to realize that we can't do that. It's a pure act of God's grace, the joy of Jesus Christ placed in our hearts. It has nothing to do with circumstances, happiness is circumstances. Joy is something we have regardless of what's going on in our lives. And allowing ourselves Peace, shalom, perfect balance between us and God, balance and harmony, and one another. They are the gifts of Christ that live within us. And then the disposition of union, and that's love. Love, agape. Allowing ourselves to be people of love that say, Lord, I love you so much. Help me be more loving. Help me move into the world. And we begin to realize that love unifies. I'm going, to just, I'm going to close with this. The, another country preacher told me this. Love is like a rubber band. He says that regardless of where the one you love is, and this also goes for, I just did a memorial yesterday for those who have passed. Regardless, it, it's stretched and connected, and then we're drawn together. See, love is always unifying. Love always brings us together. Love always makes it possible for us to overcome the circumstances that make it that make us disoriented, dis, dis, disunified. And so, be imitators of Christ as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God, a holy and a living sacrifice. Christian character is developed as we live by the Holy Spirit, choosing to be Christ-like, living a Christ-like life with those around us, 
becoming aware of, open, and receptive to the Lord's gift of peace and joy, God's love received and let go into the world, for they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. All God's people said. Help the world know that Christ is in us and we are in Christ. Lord, allow the, Holy, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit to flow through us. Allow us to, to live into the, those threshold disciplines of joy and peace. But mostly, Lord, help us to live love. Love that you're pouring out on us at this very moment. Allow us to just let it go. Let it go in and through us and out into the world. It's inexhaustible. It, it's, it's just it's something that will never end. We'll just allow that to move in and through us into this world that needs you so desperately. We love you so much. Send us out into the world as those who love you. And let others see, that, see us and know that we're Christians by our love. By our love. We give you all the glory. We praise you, Lord, that we're able to come here and worship you this morning. I ask that we go in peace in the precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Amen.